leading a healthy lifestyle is important to Carl. He's recently started making some changes to help feel healthier. Carl started to walk daily with his wife Cynthia around the neighborhood, and they've reduced their alcohol intake to align with Canada's low-risk alcohol drinking guidelines. They were recently with another couple who spoke about their new vegetarian diet. Carl and Cynthia started to do some research into transitioning to a vegetarian diet and want to speak with their doctor about whether or not this would be a good fit for them to continue to lead a healthy lifestyle and potentially lose weight. There's no question that maintaining a healthy weight is good for you. Being overweight or having obesity increases your risk of numerous health conditions, including high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, sleep apnea, mental illness, and cancer. Losing weight and keeping it off is no easy task. Knowing where to start is particularly difficult. There are many diets and food products marketed as the key to weight loss, good health, or sport performance. However, they may not work or be healthy for you. In this video post, we'll be focusing on vegetarian diets, in particular what the evidence says about their potential role in weight loss or added health benefits. We've asked Dr. Mega Podar to talk about vegetarian diets and its impact on health and weight loss. Dr. Podar is an endocrinologist with additional training in obesity medicine. She's an adjunct assistant clinical professor of internal medicine at McMaster University and clinical director of the LMC Weight Management Program. She's a co-author of the 2020 Canadian Adult Obesity Guidelines. Dr. Podar's clinical practice and research is focused on general endocrinology, and she has a keen interest in helping patients with obesity, type 2 diabetes, and other metabolic disorders. Can you talk a little bit about vegetarian diets? Yes, absolutely. And I'm glad that we're actually having a conversation on this topic because vegetarian diets are becoming more and more common. Uh, they can be part of a healthy and active lifestyle, just like any other diet or nutritional regimen. Um, I tend to hate to use the word diet because I want to focus on how we are um, looking at nutrition instead of a specific dietary regimen. So what does it mean to be vegetarian? Uh, vegetarian can be defined in lots of different ways, but in general, it's reducing or eliminating any calorie consumption coming from animal or animal products. So semi-vegetarian, some patients will uh, still have fish as part of their diet. Lacto-ovo includes milk products, eggs, uh, and meat products, but excludes red meats, poultry, and fish. And then vegan excludes all foods that contain, uh, that are coming from any animal origin. So no red meats, poultry, but also no dairy products, um, eggs, milk, milk products. In general, vegetarian diets tend to be whole food diets that are generally healthy, and they have shown to reduce the risk of heart disease, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and certain types of, of cancers as well. In some situations, they can help to control weight, but certainly not in all. So are there any special nutrient considerations when planning uh, a vegetarian diet? This is a great question because many people can feel like if they're eliminating certain aspects of their diet, that they're going to be missing out on certain nutrients. But the reality is with vegetarian diets, as long as you're eating a variety of foods and getting all of your different food groups in, uh, then there are very few additional supplemented nutrients that you need to consider when undertaking a vegetarian diet. A few specific micronutrients that I would point you to is calcium and vitamin D. A lot of our foods are enriched with calcium and vitamin D. Uh, we can, if you're not going to consume dairy products, you can get calcium through leafy green vegetables and other sort of soy products. Um, juices and other soy products are actually fortified. So try to look for those items that have additional calcium and vitamin D. Other factors to also consider is vitamin B12. Most of our vitamin D B12 does come from animal sources. Um, so you do want to make sure that you often do supplement with vitamin B12 if you can't rely on it coming from nutrition. And lastly, many people feel like they don't get enough protein with vegetarian diets, but there are actually great sources of plant-based proteins 
like soy products, lentils, nuts, seeds that will give you enough nutrition and enough protein through whole foods that you don't have to supplement. The only supplements that we do encourage across the board in most diets actually is vitamin D. Uh, we tend to not get enough vitamin D in Canada uh, through the sun alone. And if you're at higher weight, absorption can be a problem. Uh, and for some vegetarians, I do recommend getting a B12 level done in order to ensure that they have adequate supplementation. But otherwise, most micronutrients you can get from whole foods as long as you're eating a variety of foods. So if someone does switch to a vegetarian diet, are they likely to lose weight? I think this is the million dollar question, right? A lot of us tend to eat in a way that is targeting a cer certain type of weight or weight loss. And what the data shows is that the answer is sort of maybe. Uh, and I think the big answer to the question is what are you switching from? So in general, people who are vegetarian tend to be leaner than those who uh, eat a non-vegetarian diet, uh, but that diet can still consume extra calories. So when you are eating a vegetarian diet, you want to make sure you're eating whole foods, lots of vegetables, lots of fruit, lots of uh, plant-based proteins. But we want to move away from ultra processed foods or high carbohydrate foods that can easily come into the vegetarian diet. And ultimately, what the data shows that if you're eating a vegetarian diet and you're not consuming lower calories than you were before, you're unlikely going to be successful with reducing your weight. So the way I would look at vegetarian diets are, do you find that you enjoy eating that way? Can you do it long term? And is it helping you to become more healthy? Uh, the weight benefit is variable and it's dependent on what you're eating, uh, somewhat dependent on your biology and genetics. So you really want to focus on the other benefits of vegetarian diets and less so on the weight benefit. So uh, weight loss is more complicated, but you, you mentioned some of the other potential health benefits of a vegetarian diet. Can you say a bit more about that? Absolutely. This is the reason why if you're ever going to ch transition to a vegetarian diet, you know, here are the benefits that we would hope to be getting from that type of diet. In general, with cardiovascular disease, there have been quite large studies with over 70,000 patients uh, that have shown that there is a lower rate of ischemic cardiovascular disease in patients who have a vegetarian diet versus those who don't. So there may be some benefit at reducing heart disease. Along with that, some of the risk factors of heart disease like blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, uh, and weight in general, uh, we see that often patients who undergo a vegetarian diet tend to have lower risk of these health issues. Uh, and lastly, there has been some data to show that there are lower risks of certain types of cancers, uh, mainly colon cancer. Now, it's debatable as to why that lower risk is there. It may perhaps be due to higher fiber content in vegetarian foods in general, uh, and you can get higher fiber, fiber content by eating a variety of different diets. Uh, but in general, the data does show positive to show that there is lower rates of certain types of cancers. So there's lots of benefits to vegetarian diets from a health perspective, um, as well as weight. And it, it wouldn't have to be a, an all or nothing type of commitment either. I, I'm guessing that even uh, maybe increasing the uh, amount of vegetarian meals, uh, you might derive some health benefits and reducing, you know, red meat consumption in place of vegetarianism. Uh, I don't know if that's been studied at all. That's right. And, and so this is where the evidence does get murky uh, because our trials that are being done on nutrition are very difficult to do. You can imagine people are eating all different types of foods and it's hard to isolate what the actual cause and effect are. But what we know is in general, if you eat whole foods, lots of fruits and veggies, whole grains, reduce ultra processed foods, reduce, reduce red meat and alcohol, you know, across the board, those tend to be healthier choices. However, you want to decide um, that you're going to be eating long term, I would think about those few aspects of your nutrition to decide what kind of diet suits you best. So are there any special considerations around adopting a vegetarian diet for older adults? 
Yes. So older adults are absolutely able to adapt a vegetarian diet and be healthy and safe in doing so. There are a few things that I would keep in mind. Vitamin D supplementation does become more important as you get older. So you want to make sure that you're getting enough vitamin D and calcium from your foods and truthfully probably supplement with a thousand units of vitamin D uh, per day, which is recommended for all elderly adults, regardless of the diet. The second thing I would recommend is making sure you are getting enough protein content. As you get older, you do tend to lose lean muscle mass, uh, and this can affect things like balance, quality of life, and function. So you, if you are pursuing a vegetarian diet, just try and make sure you're getting enough protein with each of your meals. And lastly, enough fiber. Again, fiber uh, tends to be high when you eat a vegetarian diet, but you want to make sure that you're eating more whole vegetables and whole fruits uh, and getting enough fiber through your meals. Um, and otherwise, you're safe to pursue a vegetarian diet. I think your, your idea that you mentioned earlier, too, about making sure that you at least get your vitamin B12 tested as an older adult, because um, B12 as we age, we get a little less efficient at extracting vitamin B12 from food stuff. So if you are switching to a vegetarian diet, there might be a lower concentration of B12 in some of the proteins as well. Absolutely. Uh, and in general, focusing on a variety of foods. I think that's the key point really with any nutrition plan. Uh, you want to make sure you're eating lots of different colors, lots of different types of foods. Uh, you tend to get most of your micronutrients from that. Uh, but B12 and vitamin D tend to be the ones we worry about as we age.